If we're perceiving the world around us based on these controlled decisions or calculations, does that mean that technology would be able to make those same decisions and become conscious too? We have some um, so, comments from the audience here as well, which I can add in as well. Yeah. So we've got yeah. um, David Estevez. He said that I think computers will be able to emulate consciousness at some point, and that's what we'll need to, and that's what we'll end up calling artificial consciousness. But that's somewhat different from being a conscious being. Roz has also said that can anything become conscious if it lacks a nervous system, a brain, and memories? What thoughts do you have about that? Yeah. Oh, they're, they're two great comments, actually. I mean, so David picks up on this this uh, very important distinction between emulation and what I might call instantiation. And so the idea here is that, yeah, I mean, computers are incredibly powerful and getting more powerful all the time. And they're certainly getting more intelligent. They're able to do more things. And I think, as you mentioned, Leela, that it's very, very likely that we will increasingly offload um, complex decision making to artificial systems We're already doing it and into some to some degree for some in some contexts but that will become more and more normal uh, but the question is will will that process ever does that lead inevitably to these systems becoming actually conscious and that, that's what I think David is picking up on and a lot of people assume that that will happen I just don't think that assumption is safe if you think about two extremes like on one extreme, you've got computers that play chess. Now, these computers actually play chess. They're, they're doing it. If they beat you, they beat you. Mm -hmm. And on the other extreme, you've got computers that simulate things like weather systems. But it never gets actually wet and windy inside a weather forecasting computer. So in that case, right. it's simulating, it's emulating, but it's not instantiating. And so the right. question is, for consciousness, is a simulation sufficient to give rise to the phenomenon? Is it more like chess or is it more like the, the weather? And my intuition is that it's more like the weather, that a simulation is not going to be sufficient to instantiate uh, conscious experience. Because if you were going to assume that it was, that, that's a very strong assumption about what's sufficient for consciousness. This And the idea is, well, information processing is sufficient for consciousness. But I don't actually see a, a good, clear reason why that should be so. I think to that end, would, what would you say if I was to say that if we understand any system well enough, if we can understand the processes that allow it to come into being, that perhaps if we had the technology to, to understand what it took in our brain to develop consciousness, that it could also be created, just like if we knew what the pieces were in a computer, if we look at these pieces independently, we could say, okay, I don't really know how this hard drive works or this bit, but if we put them together, we can build a computer. Do you think a similar thing could happen with the brain? Yeah, definitely. Um, and and there's, of course, there's a very old tradition about, um, in fact, it might be necessary for us to understand that, that we can mm -hmm. never really understand something unless we can build it. I mean, Fy Richard Feynman, the physicist, was yeah. very famous for saying these, these sorts of things, right? Um, I think that's true. The question is, what, you know, what, what are the component parts? What do they need to be? Is it sufficient <laughs> to build something out of a computer, or do, do we have to build it out of neurons? And this, this is, gets back to Ros's comment as well that you said, is anything with a nervous system conscious? And you know, again, it's it's very, very difficult to say. My intuition is is not, but that having a nervous system might be a necessary, but not a sufficient condition for consciousness the real the tricky thing the real tricky thing will be you know i think it's perfectly plausible that we will um develop systems that give us the impression of being conscious and that in itself is going to be quite disruptive for society because we might just have no there might just be no good reason that we can have to either ascribe or not ascribe consciousness to such systems uh -huh. and but they will still give us you know, certain feelings that automatically we won't be able to to avoid having and you know I, I, I don't know how many people in the audience have seen one of my favorite films of all time which is Alex Garland's Ex Machina which is a, a beautiful exploration of this idea this intelligent robot um, and played by um, what's her name uh, Alicia Vikander and the other character is trying to figure out whether the robot is in fact conscious or not, a sort of different version of the famous Turing test for intelligence, but now applied to consciousness. 
Mm-hmm. So that's technology. What about animals? So I guess some of the things that we do are clearly primitive reflexes, like our knee jerk, and that's not consciousness. But, you know, if our consciousness is the result of our brain making these best guesses or predictions in response to the world around us, or we see animals that are clearly responding to the world around them and making choices, um, you know, bugs even do that. We see ants have these really interesting hierarchies, which we can't explain by reflexes. So does this mean that all creatures are technically conscious, you know, or is consciousness a distinctly human trait? Mm, that's a it's a really deep question, of course, and it's, um, it's hugely important because, um, you know, it has many implications for how we treat uh, yeah. other, other animals, which we've not historically done a, a very good job of. Uh, it seems to me um, that there are distinctively human things about human consciousness, but that consciousness in general is is much more widespread in the animal world than we, we might have thought at, at various times. So you know, consciousness is not, you don't have to be intelligent to be conscious. Consciousness is not the same thing as intelligence. And we, and we humans tend to try and put ourselves at the top of the pile always and say, like, we're smart, we have language, so those things are kind of, constitutive of consciousness. The way I've been thinking about it is that consciousness has more to do with these basic predictive mechanisms that sustain life, in which case it's going to be a lot more widespread. Um, and the forms in which conscious consciousness might take for these other creatures is going to be very different too. Mm-hmm. So you talked about animals that can make decisions of various sorts. So I think there's a good example of that, which is, let's say, rats. So I think all mammals are conscious. Let's they share, they have very, very similar brains really to us. Um, but even within mammals, they're going to be very different kinds of consciousness. So you can, you can imagine being um, sad or disappointed when you, so just something bad happens and you're, you're, you're sad. You can be then disappointed, which is something bad happened and you're expecting something better. So that already requires a bit more cognitive agility. And then you can have regret, which is I did A and I got B, which was crap, but I could have done C and got D, which would have been better. And regret, you know, is an emotion we're all very, well, I'm certainly very familiar with. And it's, it's, uh, you have to, you have to be able to entertain counterfactuals to be, to experience regret. And then we humans are, of course, of, um, can experience anticipatory regret as well. We can regret things we haven't even done because we know we're going to do them and they're going to turn out bad. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a, some wonderful experiments uh, to try and figure out whether rats could experience regret or were merely disappointed. And by looking at the behavior of a rat towards an option not taken when the option it did take turned out to be not, not very good. So all this is to, is to say that, yes, rats, I'm pretty sure, have conscious experiences, but the degree to which they're similar to humans is, an, is a very open question. Like, I don't think rats have a well-developed sense of self, you know, sense of being, you know, I'm, I'm Roland a rat. Uh, and that should be no surprise because even human infants don't have a well-developed sense of self until some, some period of, I don't know, until they're probably 30 years old or something like that, who knows? Um, 